wasn't finished, but we're not done. Well, now there's a war to be won. We never died, not even once. Welcome to the resurgence. Hello there and welcome to the best of three, two versus two final for the Resurgence Cup. We're looking at Ruby from China playing as the British forces. His teammate from the United States of America playing as the US is Hulk Smash. And from the north, we've got the Wehrmacht player, that's Ray from South Korea. And his teammate is none other than Havoc playing as the Deutsch Afrika Corps. The map is Elst Outskirts, a Co2 classic. And I've got a classic Company of Heroes series player. We've got Demer with us today. How are you doing, Demer? Very good, everybody. Very good. I'm very excited to see this game on a brand new map. I don't have much experience on it, so I'm very curious to see how other players uh, are going to approach it. I can tell you this much. I believe, other than there's two, there's two all-time great two versus two maps for tournaments, and I am not going to say Rails of Metal before anybody cringes. No, it's this one, and then of course it's Declare from Co One. So there you two. Yes. This this is <laughs> yes. Co Two's Declare, basically, in my opinion. I'm sorry for Eindhoven lovers out there, but I believe Alst Outskirts was the best tournament map in Co Two, and I'm really excited to see how well it plays in Co Three. Talk us through what the players are up to, Demer. Uh, right now, it seems pretty standard. We're seeing a bike and a dingo. Um, Havoc's going to be in for a little bit of a shock here because that dingo really does hard counter the 250 in the bike now. Yes. Uh, but yeah, right now, nothing too special. Double paths is a little particular, I find, for 2v2s. Considering, I feel like the map is wide, but it's not super wide like Pacino. Yeah. So we'll have to see how the double pathfinders plays out. But so far... Uh, Map control looks 50-50. It really Let's does. It like, the, the Co2 games on Declare were basically two 1v1s with crossover and then an epic titanic yeah. struggle for the central victory point, which sounds literally traditional AF, but it had its own character to everything I just said. Uh, but all eyes on the dingo, the baby killer. Yeah. Who's going to be hunting those little babies as light vehicles throughout this game? Yeah, the, the new Dingo is an, an absolute menace. Uh, I've been on the receiving end of this thing, and it's it's pretty painful. <laughs> so we've got no choice for Havoc yet. We do have Ruby locked into air and sea battle group. Meanwhile, we've got Italia, yep. of course, we don't even have to say, for Wehrmacht. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Airborne for the United States. That's Hulk Smash currently in the north with Pathfinders pushing out. Yeah, right now Havoc hasn't committed to a battle group yet, so we'll have to see what he's going to do. I'm reckoning with the garrisons, we might see Gwastatori, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Good, yeah, good, they're good, decent for 2v2, aren't they, Gwastatori? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More so than 1v1, at least. And yeah, there's a load of garrisons, very different garrisons. We've got like a factory here, and then an yeah, overgrown yeah. tree house. I don't know what that is. <laughs> what I'm not too sure either. But that house is very fragile, by the way. It is very fragile. Is like, it? Even a Pulsin. Yes, very fragile. These are one of the things you'll slowly learn when you play this map. Dude, could That's you, one of could, the first garrisons to go. <laughs> could you imagine naval bombardment hitting that house and all the splinters flying oh, everywhere? Dude, that'd be epic. Oh, nice push away by yeah. Hulk. Finding the MG42 of, of course, the Wehrmacht player, Ray, and pushing it away. Meanwhile, in the north, looks like we've got some action there. Pathfinders are a little bit low, but they use smoke bombs to get away. Nice work. Yeah, very nice work. So as we can see, if we open the tactical map real quick, we'll actually see it's really pretty much just two separate 1v1s going off. And uh, right now, Axis on full Ooh. retreat at the moment. Yeah, really badly, actually. We got the purple yeah, player. Yeah. That's a lilac, rather. Havoc, he is so far back in base. He may as well just yeah. set up camp and just stay there. He has got assault grenadiers. They're now joining the north. They're already forsaking the southwest. They're going to go northeast because they need to get fuel. Yeah, what's going to happen is I reckon is uh, they're going to just team up now because I think it's quite clear that both Axis factions can't 1v1 their allied counterparts no. at this point. Like, the dingo just makes stack. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, the Dingo I mean, is a big game changer in team games. I mean, big changer. To be honest, I don't know why we are seeing Dak in in, in every. We see mixed 
teams in every single situation. It is not a rule yeah. of this tournament. I, I, I half suspect that double coastal, if you if you were being super sweaty, which they should be, and there was big money on money on the line, which there is, surely mm -hmm. like double coastal? I mean, that sounds disgusting to watch, but... I I, I would say, uh, I've actually, Dex and I played a few TV2s recently, and we actually struggled more against Double Ver than we do against Mix Axis. Yeah. Usually you see Luftwaffe and Coastal. It's just the Dingo right now just put Stack in a very awkward spot. Uh, Pre-patch, I would argue that Axis was significantly stronger in the early game, just mm. because of the 250 Clown car. But that's no longer an option. Not 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 with the new Dingo. It's just impossible. By the way, we had a but few yeah. people in chat, such as Daniel D, talking about Ruby and his teammates Hulk Smash, their synergy in the previous series. If you haven't seen their previous series, it was versus Alpern and Jezulin, who were definitely the, uh, the favourites going into that in a big way. Yeah, yeah. And the synergy and the like, the flexibility of the players and the way they play together meant that they did so well and they obviously oh i'm sorry to interrupt but the dingo is about to get ambushed in the middle yeah i see it Kenzie Eggers. i like the interruption oh. thank you and middle. they got away damn it was a very good interruption it reminds me of a good cs team you know you told me the middle dingo yep. the information i needed thank you to matt good work it's all good it's all good um just the dingo is a big i'm telling you like if there's one thing that's changed from this patch I, the dingo is absolutely an mvp unit it's super easy to vet up extra line of sight 30 ammo for artillery or 35 ammo. It's a really strong unit at the moment. Do you know what's a really strong unit at the moment? It can't Mortar move. Pit. Yeah, that's it. I was going to give you like three clues, but I didn't have to. You know? Mortar pit. I was going to go, it's made 70% sand. It's a mobile. Yeah. It has a range more than from here to Canada. It's it's pretty oppressive. <laughs> no, it's a, the mortar pit is a menace, especially when it hits vets. If you look at the veterancy requirements, it's 480 for the first level. It's very, very tiny. It's less than a dingo. I think the dingo is 600, so gives you an idea. It's actually less than a bike as well. The bike isn't even vet one yet. It's 400 out of 600. Some mines are starting to detonate. Yeah. And lots of mines being planted. I think that it didn't take long for mines to become, of course, the de facto meta. The, under the underlying subsurface meta, pun intended. You know, first few <laughs> tournaments in Come Here's 3, we weren't using mines, and of course, over time, everyone's just oh. mining. Yep, that was close. Massive flank, yeah, massive flank from the boys' DT. Just went all the way around the map. Oh, and, and they got get it! Ooh. That's really good by Ruby. And the commandos as well, dropping in. Wow. What is this? That's Ruby. That's such an awkward spot to drop them, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> So, by the way, the time zones when this... Oh, the Dingo's going in as well now. Oh, oh my God, Ruby. Oh, oh. Ruby got Panzer Jaeger. Dingo went yep. in, but did not get its reward. Yeah, the Panzer Jaegers are pretty much your only, like, effective early game counter to the Dingo. But, uh, I mean, I think it paid off for itself. It did a good job of completely shutting out access from the left-hand side. Yeah, certainly. And, uh, yeah, the ammo income is pretty good for allies right now. 51 versus Whoop. 31. Yes, I see that 31 only for Havoc. Havoc does have a decent amount of munitions in the back. He's yet to choose a battle group at this point. Ray, meanwhile, has 142 yep. in the bag, so certainly going to be designating a defensive line sometime soon. And, interestingly, they have been able to get their plus 10 fuel in the far north, but they have ceded so much control of the center. Yeah, the center, the plus 10. I wonder where the DDL is going to be placed. I'm assuming it's going to go on the plus 5 munitions uh, maybe near the, the middle BP. Maybe the points, maybe. Maybe the munitions yeah. they're worried about. I think they're that defensive. It may even go on the manpower point just north of there. We have advanced weaponry ready to be deployed. Okay, we got an 8 red from Havoc. Okay, so we got a small counter offensive going on from the DAC player. Yep, slow and methodical. Uh, and this is a nice breakout, hitting a mine. Of course, there was a mine super just behind him, probably like a game yeah. meter from detecting that. And Ruby's not so happy about this situation. Ruby's going to push him with the Mandos, the boys, mm -hmm. straight away. Look at that, by the way. The boys, um, they got a shot off, then they soft retreated. The reason, of course, is reload time. No need to get shot in the face whilst you're reloading. Yeah. 
Ooh, Pakowitz are next for Ruby. Not a bad idea. Yeah, honestly, that's a perfectly fine choice here. I mean, LMG Commandos are really strong, but I think on this map, with the abundance of cover, I think you can easily creep up the SMG Commandos and get them within good range, so... I think this is perfectly fine. Yeah, Hulk Smash forced away in the north, hits a mine in the center, but's popping out spreads oh, now, bad. and is hunting yep. down the flat 30. Oh, 8 rad in the south, well spotted from yeah, yeah. there, yep. So we really have like just two separate 1v1s, that's really what's happening. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we do now finally have our DAC decision, it's armored support. Yeah. Armored support, yeah. Cocaine 8 rads, here they come. <laughs> the crack rads. <laughs> <laughs> They're out. <laughs> Certainly are. They're gonna be using those auto cannons, like something from a dystopic, futuristic nightmare. But it was in the 1940s. That's mm -hmm. the uh, Sonder Craft Fartsoigs for you. They are really scary to look at, aren't they? The yeah, Hawk Smash just slowly, like, look at this stalling in the garrison, stalling behind the cover. Yeah. It's got engineers hiding in the construction site. <laughs> <laughs> They're in a literal trench as well. It's so interesting, this map. It seems like Monolithic Bacon has decided to add as many interesting obstacles as he can. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think this is good. I mean, uh, I, I do like how much wider the map feels. Uh, yeah? I've actually, myself, yeah, I've actually myself gone around many of the edges of this map for flanking. Yeah. And I feel like in Code 2, it just wasn't really a possibility. Uh, I mean, you could do it in Code 2, it, it but... It existed, but you rarely saw it. And I remember yeah. casting tournament games when they finally used the, like, the escape routes, let's say, for a damaged vehicle. Yeah. It was super hype back in the day. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like a, it's a lot wider. Like, if I look at the bottom field where the commandos are capturing, I know in Code 2, the boundary doesn't extend there was a river that here. far out on the, the river's left. The dried yeah, yeah, yeah. out now, so you could get to the left, but it was more difficult. Yeah. And more difficult. It's just a lot more space, yeah. Big shout out then to, of course, Havoc, who was able to break out of the Kessel and start to push south. He may be ceding control back now, but I really feel that's gotten the Axis back into this early to mid game. We also now have yeah. the Verbal Wind out for Ray, of course. Uh, he's got his flak back, and he's building a bunker. What do you think he's going to go for there, Demir? Um, that's probably going to be a medical bunker, if I had to take a guess. Yeah, it's going to be a medical bunker, and I guess DDL will go up on the manpower point, or maybe the ammo point. I think it's going to be the ammo point, actually. It could be. There is a nice tree line there. I see which one yeah. you mean now, yeah. By the way, there you go. MG42 has been decrewed by the airburst shells of the static mortar emplacement. Yep. And there we go. DDL's on the ammo point behind the tree line. So... Nice call, nice call. That's a really nice placement oh. as well, yeah. Oh, Pathfinders are going for the MG42. Yeah. Bit of friendly fire. Coastals aren't there to help out enough. That's a really good steal for Hulk Smash. Yeah, that's a good pickup. Just as his bulldozer hits. That's a 12-minute bulldozer to Yeah, that's actually... Holy, yeah, I just heard the noise. I was like, wait a minute, is that a... <laughs> that is so scary. Opposing yeah, that, that's, let's go that's... to Ray's army. He has... No, no answer. No yeah, We got no answer. <laughs> this could be the end. Well, not not with shots like that, but this could be the end. Yeah, and, and Havoc. Emphasis. That's a bit. Uh, Havoc has a stug D right now, so there's no martyrs or no Shreks, oh, no nothing. Oh, oh man. Oh, by the way, stug D is in a bit of bother yeah. there. Stug D could be going down to the boys. Oh no, gets away. Yeah. Right now, the bulldozer has rotated to the bottom. What? Yeah. That was a quick rotation. Yeah. It really is going to apply itself so well. I mean, the shock emphasis on the field, but it could have just carried on bulldozing the Wehrmacht from what I could see. Yeah, I'm very surprised about this rotation. I, you know, I feel like that bulldozer could basically push off all of Ray's units and he, they could secure the, the point, remove the DDL. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just noticed there was an OP on the fuel I saw that outside of the ally yeah. base. Yeah, okay, that'll explain the 12 minute uh, 105. So, yeah, it will. Well, so Ver Vermax, otherwise known as Ray, have gotten the A Shrek out now. But they left themselves wide open for exploitation there, and I'm very surprised, to be honest, that Hulk Smash didn't smash Vermac there. Surely yeah. he could have done more. 
Yeah, no, I agree. That's that was very surprising. I feel like that was a big missed opportunity to just completely collapse Ray. I mean, if I switch over to Ray, he doesn't have the ball work on the bunkers either. So okay. that's a pretty fragile bunker. Definitely ball work. I don't know how to say it either. Bulk work or ball work? I'm not, not too sure. <laughs> Nobody knows. What is that word? <laughs> what is it? What does it mean, Relic? <laughs> Look at this line from Ruby. He's defended this south quadrant yeah. so well. Usually by now, Vermatch would have been able to push through this south quadrant to get the cutoff at some point. They haven't gotten close once to man. Yeah, the mortar pit's already at Vet 3. It's got 11 kills. I mean, that thing is a pain. It's, it's just a pain to destroy once he gets to that, that stage. Oh, by the way, we've now got Havoc. He's starting to build up an army size. He's got a Marder coming, he's at 58 pop cap. In fact, let's go through the pop caps of all of the people. His teammate Ray has 60. On the allies, we've got Hulk Smash 74 leading the way. And Ruby at 57. Yeah. Wait, Ruby's got vehicle training. He's getting it right now. Oh, we got a Matilda. Oh, nice. Okay. That Marder can't hit soon enough. Where's it at? Oh, come on, Marder, you need to help out. The Brits are oh, starting to push back. Yeah, so right now the A rat for Dak is scouting, giving the bonus rate of fire. This is actually going to come in handy uh, later on in the game. If Havoc keeps his army and doesn't lose any vehicles and gets stronger, mm. gets more units, he's going to be in a good spot. The allies have played well, but they've done a few disjointed actions. Um, some of the pushing they've done is a little bit... Ray! <laughs> yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but Ray, Ray's piles were repairing his opponent's sandbags and they got killed on the top VP. I Ooh. just had to point that out. Yeah, I see was, the bodies. That was weird. Good point out to me. It's always good to catch them. Yeah. But I just think they're lacking in a little bit of confidence, would you say, Demer, that in this game one, the allies? They, they play well, uh, but I don't some know. of the stuff hasn't I... been exactly as... Uh, I think they're playing. I think they're playing fine at the moment. I mean, they're they have good VP pressure. Uh, they're in a pretty stable position right now. I just feel like Hawk Smash really missed out on his opportunity to just end uh, Ray right there on the spot. Yeah. Because uh, I, I didn't see a reason for him to rotate that bulldozer. I mean, the Stug D almost died. It's not like the Dak player was going to overwhelm the Brit one. So. But so far, what the allies are doing is just really good work. I mean, they, they got they got the early mortar pit up. Uh, they put a bunch of mines. They're just you know, sitting back, waiting for the axes to make plays at them. I think this is perfectly okay. Good point from Azilagaf of France in chat. Hulk has enough for two carpet bombs, and he's getting close now. He needs five CPs, so we're going to do this the American way soon, Demare. Yeah, that's true. I actually forgot about the carpet bomb. Yep, also, right. Ruby has 250 ammo, so he's going to have naval artillery soon. <laughs> oh. Oh, here we go. Stickers. Oh, there's a squad wipe. Uh, that's pretty big. What do you think it was? Was it a Royal Engineer, perhaps, or a Tommy? Yeah, I a, think yeah, so. It was a boys' A team. It was a boys' A team. Yeah. Oh, we've got striking back here. Oh, here it comes. Yeah. Here comes the USAF. What are they going to get? Uh, oh, the they flag get a flag down. Yeah, that's in a capturable position as well. And they are going to be able to capture it. They're going to take it, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> that's not what you want, Demare. Oh, and no. they get a squad wipe as well with the bulldozer on retreat there, I believe. Yeah. Let's have a look at Ray's army. Oh my. It's not looking good from the infantry front at all. He does have two martyrs now though. And... Two martyrs, yeah. If he stops right now, he could take on this bulldozer. Da yeah, he could. He needs to pursue perhaps. But he doesn't know what's hiding in the blue. The enemy has claimed our territory for their own. By the way, look at the build-up from Havoc. I believe his army's looking pretty yeah. decent now, but it's difficult to push because you've got that big tree house thing in the way. What should do with getting rid of that. Yeah, yeah. There's the wizard. What's the wizard's name for this cast, uh, Demare? You get to name the wizard. No, let's call him Wilhelm. Wilhelm! A German wizard. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 
Oh wait, it's true, it should be an Italian, huh? Oh. Yeah, probably. Fabrizio, maybe. Who knows? Fabrizio, yeah. I mean, in Titanic, he gets shot, right? Fabrizio, yeah, he gets shot, so that's probably what's gonna happen here. Uh, let's enough. see. Ruby making inroads into the center. Those Vet 2 Commandos who get a lot better at Vet 3. A lot of things do in this game, but especially the Mandos. And there you go. He's gone for anti tank rocket loiter, Ruby. That is surprising. But to be honest, I think that's okay considering that he already has, you know, his teammate has Carpet Bomb and he can also get the Naval Artillery. I think the. Do you like Carpet the... Bomb? Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I think it's okay. Where are these guys going? Oh, they're going down here? I can't actually make out where the carpet bombing's gonna hit. Oh, it's not. It's not. It's supply drop. I'm an idiot. It's only two planes. Yeah. Calm down, A. <laughs> Calm down! It's this thing here. Yeah, it's getting excited. A caster's nightmare is missing a big moment, so my brain plays tricks on me. Don't worry. My bulldozer's still in town. It's gonna go and have some fun on the DDL. Yeah, Havoc right now. Kind of just AFKing his A rat on the left side, and there's this Matilda just pushing in by itself. Those martyrs could have. Oh, there's oh, the Oh, they HP can. Later. They can. It's red smoke. Oh dear. That's a damaged engine. That's a rocket loiter as well. You've got an eye in the sky here for destruction, and it's coming to me. Can he get out of town? Yeah, I don't know. Oh my god. Oh dear. The entire map is just cluttered with my guns. Bad man. That's a pretty really good dodge. It could have been a. It yeah. could have been a lot worse. It could have been. It could have been. Whoever wrote the script for these team games this tournament really didn't like Germans. I mean... <laughs> They've gone through some absolute terrible situations. Yeah, there's a lot of... Uh... Ooh, Jaeger's in um, a bit of yeah, pain there. So don't forget, ladies and gents, the Wehrmacht player Ray is one of the best players in the world, formerly known as Asher Law. His teammate Havoc is similarly in the top three of players on auto match. So these guys are no slouches. It's just that Hulk Smash and Ruby are playing out of their skins, and they've got a lot of synergy going for themselves. And also, Damara will point out that the, uh, the Allies players here, they did win the only Axis game I've seen yeah, in this tournament in that's team true. games. And the, that's true. They want Pacino stalemate they won against the odds. Yeah, just to win with his four Hellcats. I caught the I caught the end of that game. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. Hilda's doing some uh, terraforming here. Just trying to Yeah, know. that's true, huh? The Hawk Smash, he's got an AFK Pathfinder in the rubble instead of securing the fuel. <laughs> Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how long it's been there for, but <laughs> he's got no. He's got two. He's got the. Uh, he's got. Uh, he's got paratroopers in the north just chilling. They're actually, you know, trying yeah. to take something out. But yeah, the pathfinders are now finally in action there. Hulk smash has been a little bit distracted, trying to clear out the center. It seems. There we go. Martyr's getting juicy shots on the Matilda. Oh, that's what that was a tag round. Yeah, through those trees. A little bit quiet for a while. Let's check the armies. We've got Havoc. Well, playing the Dak way, Demare. Just building tanks and vehicles. No infantry. Yeah, yeah that, this is the way. That, this is the way to do it. Yep. We've got the Mandos capping through smoke. But of course, this is Dak, so those vehicles can cap as well. They're stopping the Mandos from capping. Meanwhile, Ruby's army is getting more infantry, it seems. He's got. hasn't got quite enough fuel to get any more tanks at the moment. And then you've got Ray's army. Lost a martyr at some point. Oh yeah, during yeah. the bombing, I remember that now, yeah. I will say though, Havoc's army is quite uh quite scary at the moment. I mean he does have a P3, but he has gone armored, so it's gonna do decent damage to the infantry. Why which, which and he doesn't have skill planes. Is that the sphere of fire drills? Bombs. Is that the sphere of fire yeah. drills that helps him? Yeah, 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 yeah. What upgrades yeah, yeah, does he have? Helps. Does he have any upgrades from the Dax He's got all the upgrades. <laughs> so all of his vehicles right now, they're fully pimped. You know, <laughs> exhibit would be proud. Pimp and mine pants. Hit my Reich. Yeah, Season two, Reich. here we go. Here we go. I tell you what, there's some tanks oh, the left out in the open there. What's the hell yeah. doing? You're not a horse. Get out of the barn. You're dead. Uh-oh, but the P3 getting snared. 
Who's going to he help? There's no Hellcat to follow up to me. There's no Hellcat anymore. Uh. Our cowards are landing a direct hit on the tractor. Holy smokes. Coaster's nearly going down as well, Demer. They're doing a good thing for us now, mate. They're putting all their action on one screen. They're fighting for the center. I told you that's how this map works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Makes definitely. it easier. Makes it easier to cast. It's much better. Avi cannot lose that that vetted 8 rad. That thing is effectively a force multiplier. Cannot lose that. Yeah. How, how does that scouting. work then? Is that because it scouts, is it? It scouts and it gives you, uh, the vet 1 ability gives you extra reload, 30%. It's quite scary. A lot of synergy and zeal style um, abilities. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You think That's that why, like, his army is massive. It's it's a very strong army. I, th I think he's got the strongest army at the moment. Yeah, I would like, say down. Well, let's have a little look at what we all, else we've got coming. Looks like Ruby's going for a, an M3. Which is nice. The Grant's coming out if I Yeah, the Grant the is really good. Let's yeah. go. Let's play the resurgence theme music yet again. <laughs> oh, we've got a bit of a battle in the center. The Matilda's gone in. And this time yeah. it's going to be the anti tank rocket loiter. Looks like everything got away. Yeah, that loiter's. Oh, we got democracy bombs. On oh, the that's a big one. That looks like it's going to be a big one. Yeah, oh, that's a Jesus. lot of manpower. I tell you what, he didn't lose a single squad there somehow, yeah. some way. Somehow, yeah. Wowza. That was, that was dangerous though. It was. The, <laughs> the rockets haven't oh, finished. Go. Yeah, it's still going off, but Bulldozer's gonna go down. It's eventually yeah. Bulldozer dead. Mardis. Grant coming in. Go oh, on, I son. don't know about this. Yeah. I can't remember how the music goes, but yeah, go Grant, it's already dead, for God's sake, Grant. You're meant to be the talisman of the tournament, you're the mascot, you can't die. Oh, and Havoc Smoke, Havoc Smoke just completely backfired, the Grant's gonna escape. Yep, the smoke backfired, meanwhile the boys are going in for those mortars, and they're taking them out, what an attack, Matilda following up, Ruby's on fire, your defense is bomb, terrified. Oh, this could help, Stuka Dive Bomb could help. Oh, but the target was behind the lines. He was expecting a retreat, but instead the Brits went forwards. Jesus. Tilda was so there, trying to help out. But there's an AT gun there, and look at the Brit forces they put so far forward. Can Havoc Dak save the day, Demer? Um, he's got a Stug D. If he can toggle the Vet One on the Eight Rad and just keep pounding. The stub fires every two seconds with that ability active. It's very strong. Couldn't quite okay. do it though. Meanwhile, the rifles yeah. are also pushing in. Hulk Smash finally spells blood. But here comes the return of the Wehrmacht. Wilhelm, the Italian wizard, forces them away. The Tilda's coming in. Triple cap. Oh no, not quite a triple cap, sorry, this is the victory point here, my bad. But still, 94 victory points remain for Axis now. Havoc's pop, cop, pop cap is at 57, meanwhile Ray is at 59. The Allies have 82 for Hulk Smash, yes. and 83 for Ruby. Let me take a look, let's see what upgrades he has. Yeah, for he already has. He's got all the upgrades, except tungsten and the scopes. But he's got the smooth. He's got everything. It's, it's got to surely, surely be havoc with some sick Dak plays that saves the day here. I mean, I know Ray's not doing too badly, but I just don't feel Ray has the punching power as Vermat. Yeah, that that Grant getting away was that was pretty huge. Uh, oh, that loss there now for um, Havoc. He'll barely have any infantry. He's got one two-man Penzer Grenadier now. Yeah. Oh, AT gun about to get sieged by the Stug. Oh, the tractor goes down to the Matilda and the Grant. Yeah, talking of which, they're both pushing through the center with yeah. commando support. 
The end looks near. This looks bleak for the Axis. Yeah, I know. That, that stuck's gonna get flanked. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Planes to help finish everything off as well. That looks like game one to me. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, <laughs> we went from seeing the strongest army go down to the weakest in the blink of an eye. This is all superficial now. There's no such thing as fake GGs with our tawny rules. There you go, Ray's just quit the hard way. And uh, let's roll the credits. It wasn't finished, but we're not done. Well, now there's a war to be won. We never died, not even once. Welcome to the resurgence. Right then, let's have a little look at these stats, shall we? There we go. Um, what can we see, Demer? Who did the most damage? Looks like it was the... Sm Actually, it was Ray somehow. Ray did the most damage. That's interesting. I actually thought it would be Hulk Smash considering that his bombs did uh... Yeah. <laughs> I, I know for a fact, I'm pretty sure what, who had the least amount of casualties. Ruby, actually. Yeah. Wow. I actually thought it'd be Havoc. Well, both allies Damn. player had a very positive KD which is not a good sign. Um, let's go to points held and have a little look at that. We'll choose the people that were playing off against each other. That's Ray and Hulk Smash. You can see that, yeah, after the 23 minute mark, Ray collapsed. Yeah. So what? I think what happened there is that, that carpet bomb, even though it didn't uh, wipe anything, it was enough to force Ray completely off the map. Yeah, you can see that. I'll and, go back to uh, that graph there, Demet. You, you bang on, mate. Yeah. Uh, how can you hold the map when there's four planes with bombs like smashing your face? Yeah, that's the every thing. Every ninety seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's the. That's that's pretty much uh, the, the the painful Axis experience right now. Yeah, but how, how big is the uh, cooldown on the supply drop? It costs one hundred twenty-five manpower or something like that. So uh, yeah, it's I think one hundred twenty-five or maybe one hundred fifty manpower. Yeah, I think so it's got like a three-minute cooldown. Okay, but um. So every yeah, three just... minutes you can nuke half of the map, basically. Yeah, and also I didn't I didn't really pay attention, but if you go commandos, right, with Air and C, you get access to the 150 manpower cache that doesn't require a Royal Engineer to build. Wow, eight so... was actually right for a change. It was 125, and I, I thought it was a smaller cooldown than that. 90, 90 seconds. seconds. Wow. Wow. It's possible, yeah. Yeah, I got told off on YouTube for talking about balance too much when I cast those, so I won't make this about balance. I will just say the allies had a, you know, they had a card to play there. They played it, and it's a very difficult thing to come up against from Axis. That said, though, we know that Ruby and ha and Ruby and Hulk Smash have got the only Axis win of the tournament in team games. Um, so let's see if they can do it in game two, shall we? Yeah, let's take a look. Let's see if they can do it. They might have a better idea of how to show us the way. Show us the way. Show us the way. Dexon and I had an interesting match uh, on that map. We were up against three eighty eights from DAC. Oh wow! <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> three. <laughs> Did that work? I was going for core. Uh, let's just say when uh, when uh, someone got, I, th I think it was him who got his Matilda out or something. Uh, there was an 88 just waiting for him, and then it became three 88s. We basically had to save for off maps, and I had to go four easy eights with Seek and Destroy. Wow. Let's see uh, see how many viewers we've got. Let's just talk to chat for a second and acknowledge the people. We've got 278 for a, a an impromptu surprise stream. That's not too bad. We've got legends like Alpern. We've got people like Inca Una. 
Um, Dexon, Toilet Guy. I played Toilet Guy. Toilet Guy used to be my level, but now he's like a little bit better than me, so that really annoys me. Quite a bit better, actually. Um, who else have we got? Nelly Neal. Any shout outs to me? Anybody you can see in chat that you'd like to shout out? Well, I mean, I see a lot of names in here. <laughs> <laughs> I see Elper and I see Inca. I see a, there's a lot of names in here. Let me see. I think I saw a Sildor in here earlier. I did, yes. Sildor, yes. Maybe. Toilet Guy, I recognize yeah. that. Momo, Thomas, Orange Pest, Webster. I could go on. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of a lot of the same names. Some names I haven't heard for a long time as well. Just nice to have you here, guys. And uh, we are going to now launch into game four with no resurgence music this time because we've had like a lot of it in the last game. So an intro and an outro. So we'll just go in cold this time. Let AE do the scores. We should be looking at who's the guys on the left. That's Hulk Smash. So. Do you reckon it's going to go to a decider, Demare, or do you reckon that... Um... I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> I mean, I I do think allies are significantly stronger in team games. Um, yeah. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's technically... It's a new map as well. It's relatively new, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's anyone's... Anyone's game. Right. Let's, let's freaking go. I do actually have a different... Um, transition hang on what's this one i got the ml one let's play the ml one i haven't heard that for a while let's see how that goes All right. oh three two one play six seven eight nine ten are you with me demare yes sir yes sir who do we see before we're ready us? to go Pardon me? Who do we see before us? Well, we see Mr. Hulk Smash and Mr. Ruby playing as the Axis up top versus um, Ray from South Korea and Havoc from good old Canada. And uh, Canada yeah. a real country. I just want us to spell any myths in chat. I'm just asking you know. from a pure, like, I'm genuinely curious. Like, how yeah, does I think it it's, yeah. You know, it's a it's a country that speaks English and French. It's kind of like the United States, but not like the United States. Uh, Canada's one of Sometimes it countries. snows. Really? Sometimes it's sunny. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know, I, I do Sometimes actually really like... I, I really, really like Canada, by the way. But do you want me to tell you one of my, my least favorite things about it? The hay fever. I went to Quebec, and oh my oh. god, they've got this pollen that's like spores the size of a baby's hand like landing in your eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that about? Mm -hmm. Uh, listen, man, Canada is a big, vast nation <laughs> with an abundance. Who's like, do you know something? <laughs> do you have sandworms no. in Canada? <laughs> sandworms yeah. in Canada. <laughs> I will say this year, though, there's been, I've had like two snow drops and like, that's it. Like, there's been like two, like, small snow, snowstorms, but like, there's no snow at all where I live. Nothing. Yeah, anybody... I feel like we're in spring. Yeah, yeah. If anybody in chat wants to, to run a prediction, please do so. Because we are, have got all eyes on the Imperius, Hulk Smash and Ruby playing, ugh, that's right, Coastals from the North. That's right, we've yeah. got Ruby's Dark, same faction, same positions. Do we even have yep. Brits in the South? Of course we've got Brits in the yep, South. We've we do. got that baby-eating dingo on the hunt yep. in the South. I will say, though, Ruby has no bike or no 250. He just went straight for infantry. So, kind of shows that he's kind of aware that Dingo Menace is a real thing. Dingo Menace is certainly a real thing. Yep. It's a devilish thing. You got the RAF symbol on the back as well, otherwise known as like the mod symbol from the bands like The Who. You may have seen it on The Who's drum kit back in times before. Eminence or... from. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Eminence from. <laughs> Good old GTA teaching me The Who music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right then, the dingo's found its prey. It did find it. There was a cat and crowd, and of course, the dingo seeks it out. Yeah, I don't think he should be chasing this though. He's no way he's gonna catch it. Right off the bat, Axis already playing as a team. Yeah. He got a very late 250. And, yeah, and that's uh, the synergy I was talking about. They've been playing as a 2v2 team. Yeah. And uh, 250 is actually gonna pay off here because the dingo is all the way at the other edge of the map. And there we go. 
USA has to completely retreat now. In fact, the dingo is retreating. The hunter has become the hunted. Yeah, the hunted, yeah. <laughs> oh, the 250 could kill the dingo here. And oh, really no, pushes. that's really bad. That can't happen. <laughs> but big shout out to Hulk Smash, by the way. He wrote the book on mixed allies 2v2. Literally a 39-page um, Google Doc back in 2012 for Co one but the cat and crad caught out by the Tommies there nearly dies very quick Ooh. reaction speed very quick big flank coming in here but an MG will intercept it oh there's a mine How's yeah that that's for you? that's that's pretty big I mean that's 50 ammo down the toilet oh dear Oh dear, oh dear. And on top of that, that's also going to kind of hurt the Dingo's usage. I mean, he still has another Roll Engineer left, but... You know, it's always nice having two repair units. It really is. 220 manpower you're not getting back. And yeah. munitions. And now the infantry sections are becoming retreating... Infantry yeah, section. this 250 doing a lot of work. I mean, these Pegrins haven't retreated once this entire game, and they're still at full health. Just shows you how decisive their early game fights have been. And I think this is what DevM wanted to see all the while. I mean, people may not like the kind of lobbing play style that it encourages, but that is the game design of DAC. You're meant to synergize with yeah. your 250s. You're meant to push with them. And it's taken the community a, a, a bit of a while to realize that Panzer Grenadiers aren't trash, by the way. Wipe up there for the the um, Hulk Smash. I think he lost it. Oh, something died. Yeah, it was Hulk Smash. Trying to investigate. Coastal. It, it yeah. was a coastal, yeah. He's dead. I thought he got away, but he didn't. He got shot in the back of the head, which isn't very good for your health. I was talking to my doctor the other day, and he said getting shot in the back of the head may not be conducive to... Uh, a healthy cranium. Just an FYI for chat there. I like it. Ruby had his Panzerjägers kind of hiding near the wooden logs near the 250. Obviously to easily bait the dingo into assaulting it. Yeah. So we also got the yeah. Kettengrad oh. laying many mines in the south. That Kettengrad that got away is very busy in the south. I actually like this. He's planning a mine before entering the point on the path of arrival of the enemy unit. I reckon oh, oh, oh. the dingo will go for this. Yeah, the, the yeah. dingo smells it's gonna it. Go for it. It's going straight yep. into a trap there, Demare. That's really cool. Watch it use the yep. northern entrance now to that paddock. No, he's not going to. This could be big brain, yep. ginormous yep, yep. forehead. Your receding hairline spots the back of your neck. Let's have a yep, look. Here we go. Oh, here we go. That's going to be really big. <laughs> they couldn't finish him off. Oh no! I thought one mine would kill it. No, oh. the dingo has more health, so unfortunately, uh, yeah. Damn it! I, 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 yeah, personally, I feel like that's what makes the dingo so painful to deal with in the early game. It, you, like even a mine won't punish it. So. Damn it. Ah. Damn it. Yeah. That's well played, though. Yeah. I swear if it was me playing Brits, my dingo would be dead right now. I think they increased its HP though. I'm not oh, too recently. sure. Oh, recently, yeah, to be fair. Okay. Yeah. I noticed the Humber feels more tanky. Did they increase that thing's HP as well? No, only the armor. Oh, yeah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I definitely find Brits a bit easier this patch, personally, but uh, I think they're in a good spot, Dema. They seem like they... Yeah, no, I agree. Nice. I... Yeah, their uh, Reddit was having a midlife crisis about it, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not too sure. Look at this. I don't know what kind of games they're playing. <laughs> he's gonna have to lay defensive mines now because he feels like he's just been pushed back and just not looking too strong for the U.S. They got havoc. Meanwhile, has gone for a six pounder quite early. I think that shows that the Allies players feel like they've not had the best of this early game and, and I think the well, victory points prove that. Well actually I'm a little surprised they went for an early 18 gun because they actually have Axis fuel at the moment. They have it. They yeah. actually have the fuel lead. So I'm a little surprised about the preemptive six pounder. He good he does have boys AT. Uh but there is a flag fueling. Okay there's a flag fueling truck. Maybe maybe it's warranted. 
Your pronunciation sounds way better than mine. I say flak feeling. Is that from? What are you saying? Uh, I don't, I don't remember what I said. Sounded better. Flak feeling? Flak feeling, maybe? It just sounds more natural. You are a dual linguist, so. There we go. Commando's dropping in for Havoc now. It's gonna help. Where are they dropping? Oh, right behind the trees in the center. That's quite a scenic. I was, drop. I was gonna say the, the shack. <laughs> the, the little crap shack, but you Love know. shack! It's a love shack, <laughs> not a crap shack. <laughs> right. Got me a car. I oh, got me a dingo. It's as big as a whale. We're about to set sail. All right. So, uh, allies here got a mortar pit significantly later compared to the previous match that we just casted. Yeah. This is an eight-minute mortar pit, which is a little later, but it's okay, I guess. The important thing though is they have it up. I feel like that's a no-brainer on this map. Oh yeah, for certain. Pretty much a no-brainer on every map. Yeah, on every map. Yeah, true. Point. But where you put it, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's a flak attack and a half, isn't it? Yeah. Bloody hell. Commando's in the wrong Not neighborhood. Like... There goes the barret. Oh, goes back to the head. Okay. Got like a Lancaster bomber going over Hamburg there. Not a happy time. Right then, Demare, where's the next power spike? Where's the next action going to come from? Ah, Verbalvind. <laughs> Hulk smash answers you. Yeah, right now the allies need to be careful. Ray may actually lose his mortar pit. He got vet one, but um, Ruby has a mortar half track and he's immediately attacking this thing. It might actually go down. Yeah, let's If it does, look. that's a pretty big loss. That could be huge. Relatively huge. Yeah. For some reason, the last few shots it. haven't done anything. Yeah, this thing is really tanky. Oh, Havoc noticed it. Yeah. Let's get He's repairing it. Oh! What have you seen? <laughs> okay. Oh my god. What nearly, have you seen? Nearly wiped. There is the incendiary on the oh, mortar yeah, pit. Oh yeah, he got it. Nearly claiming. Oh. There we go. Ray's pulling in an anti-tank gun. Blood, the LG40 coming now. Oh, it's the M1, sorry. My bad, Ray's yeah, the US the L, player. Yeah, the M1, yeah, they yeah. swap places, they swap places. Ray's the US player, M1 coming down. He is airborne. And the mortar pit has been killed. Damn. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's what you were laughing at, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I did, I, when I panned the camera, it was still alive, but I think the mortar, the HE shells just finished it off. Yeah. Ruby. Yikes, total collapse of the map control for allies right now. We should do a time sync by the way, I'm at 11 minutes and 1, and 2, and 3. Yeah, I'm just one second behind you. Oh, okay, oh, that's not too bad. Commando's pushing forward, we've got Ruby relinquishing position. We have something happening in the center. It's the Panzer is finding the Dingo, but the Dingo gets out of there. Nice speedy retreat from Havoc. Yep. Oh, Havoc is Aaron C, I think. Let me know. Wait, he's not Aaron C. Oh, he is. He is. There we go. Yeah, let's have a look at Commandos. all of their uh, battle groups now. We've got, uh, obviously, Italian Coastal. We've got Airborne, as we know, and Armored yeah. Support for Dallas. Armored. So, is that not the exact same battle group combination from the previous it's, game? Uh, it is. Yeah, same combination. <laughs> however, we've got Veteran Gunners, though, instead of the, um, instead of the improved Coaxial DPS. Which is pretty interesting. Something just went down here. Yeah, there's a mine that exploded. Ah, that's all it was, okay. And I think we... I think, did that wipe a panzer pile? Something died, that's have. what I'm saying. I heard the DAC and was yeah. crazy, okay. Yeah, it's a panzer pile. Look at this, the Axis are defending on that central line here. That is a bad sign for Ray. He's having to use smoke from the... Pathfinders to try and break out the coastals, break up the smoke, break up the crowd, and they're at the entrance, pretty much, of the base. Yeah, of their base. There. Oh my God, enemy at the gates. Mortar pit number two is up. I actually like that position, uh, but right now, if look at Hulk smash. Look at his flak, his MG. Like that is. That's really good. I don't think we're, we're playing plants versus zombies. You're not meant to be building a turret in your base. <laughs> oh dear. Feeling, pushing away. In the south, Ruby is just really playing out of his skin. 
So is Hulk Smash, to be honest. Yeah. No, they're, they're, they're on point. I, I think the biggest difference in this game compared to the previous one was just the early game. Completely, I, they really controlled the middle the whole yeah. time. I want to point, I just like, I would love to go back and watch that early game. If this is a 2 0, maybe we should break it down to Mare. Maybe we should go back and actually analyze just how good it was what they were doing in the early game, just to break it down the difference between a, a, a good 2v2 team that synergizes and one that doesn't quite do that. Do you have boys 18 pushing in? Yeah, pushing in, all smoke comes in clutch. I'm all surprised that Mortar Hatcher didn't die there. I really thought they had that one. Yeah, they need something. Nice little uh, AT grenade there. Boys AT continues to fire. Verbal looks like it's got enough health to pull away. They especially have now the flat feeling. Is yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. firing. Yeah, Ruby's gonna go straight to Panzer three. He's actually taking up the Panzer uh, oh. commands. So yeah, we're gonna see Panzer three train. Wow. And there's a Matilda. Wow. Yeah. Wait a minute. A Matilda's already out? That is a quick Matilda, yeah, reasonably so. And they've dropped a pack out as well. If they get back into this, I feel again it's Havoc having a, a decent time of things. He's got a pack out, so he's got a Matilda. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a pretty decent army composition. Oh, the artillery officer nukes the second right. mortar. Pit. Fire, yeah. He gets the uh, mortar bit. Yeah, you're right, but yeah. a little bit of friendly fire. The pioneer dies, so very good trade, though. Very, very good trade. Yeah. Look at this minesweeper Matilda action. Demare, you got to love to see it. Yeah. This is a pretty wide flank here coming in from Havoc. Unfortunately for him, there's a Pack 40. Uh, no, Pack 38, sorry. That's kind of just chilling there. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. in the rear as well. And Panzieger's ready to fire. Push cancelled. The flank did not deliver. Yep. Oh, sappers go down, by the way. Here. Oh, I didn't Water see took that. them out on the plus 10 munitions. Oh, okay. No repairs for Havoc. Caught it late. Had to do some aircraft investigation to figure out what happened. Wasn't pretty. In the north, we do have a push from the bulldozer. Ray coming in from that angle. He's pushing up to the guardhouse at the moment. Seems like the allies have stabilized the men. They've stabilized. The only problem with them at the moment is their ammo income isn't that great. And um, they're going to need the their off-map abilities to dislodge this. Uh, but with 36 ammo per minute for Havoc, that's severely going to limit him in terms of being able to use his off- Oh my god, then mine. Yeah, that mine suppressed Jesus. pretty much everything. Yeah. Was like I don't know, I just feel like allies are going to have a hard time here. They're going to have a hard time. Is it the mines of Messina in uh, World War One, where the British sappers laid a massive mine in the German trenches? Well, in this case it backfired. That was a big one. <laughs> I mean, I guess Ray could drop ammo for Havoc to use, but that also means Ray is going to be missing out on his ammo for his off-map. Coming, it seems. Double half track mortars have been raining hellfire down yeah. from Ruby. One's vet three now. Yeah, that's that's probably the one that destroyed the uh, first mortar pit. Yeah, seemingly. These incendiary rounds. Straight There's our first coach. Panzer three. First mm -hmm. Panzer three. Have we got any upgrades to me? Uh, only one. We have smoke. We don't have the. Uh, AFK repairs. That's the survival. Pathfinders go down. Pathfinders yep. down. Nice shout out there. Do, by the way, we have the Panzer Storm as an ability Ruby could use at some point. Yeah, that's true. Let's see what other abilities players could use. We've got anti tank rocket loiter for Havoc. Uh, we have yet to choose the late stage abilities for Hulk Smash. Let's check out this northern engagement before we continue. Um, we have yet to choose for Ray, and we've yet to choose for Ruby, but we could choose Stuka Dive Bomb if we wanted to. So we got the Pathfinder scouting the DDL. 
Oh, Martyr zones out the 105 pretty easily. Yeah. Lockdown. Central victory point stayed in Axis hands for a while, meaning the Allies are bleeding. No, no, they've captured the North. They've captured the North. They're fine for now. Yeah. But they, they stem the tide of the bleed at 229. So I think right now what allies need to do is they actually need to split up. Well, no, not split up, but I think they need to harass the left-hand side to force Axis to kind of, like, split up and maybe catch them during a rotation. Because right now, uh, Hulk Smash is just completely camping the top right corner, and Ruby's taking care of the middle. But left-hand side is completely up for grabs. Do you think a difference in how they've played here is that they have gone that traditional Axis one side and center? Um, in the previous game, Axis did split up a lot more. Yeah, it was a lot more 1v1 in uh, on the respective... Uh, or I, I would say, though, I think the biggest takeaway was actually the Mortars uh, just being instantly killed in this game. Yeah. In the previous game, they were, I think they were up by like four minutes or five minutes. Isn't that a tale as old as time? You have to take out the indirect or you will bleed. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing in Code One or Code Two. Eventually, you know, they're they're gonna connect. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna wipe something. Yeah. If you, for example, you come against double priests, or what was the uh, British uh, one in Code One? Sex. Yeah, yeah, the priest. If yeah, the priest. Yeah, the priest. Yeah, the priest. In Code One or Code Two, you have to dive to take them out. If you don't dive to take them out, you will bleed out in the game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the mortar pit is our priest at the moment. <laughs> Uh, the mortar pit is just, uh, I would say the mortar pit, you know, the reason if you do, if you don't kill it early on, it just becomes unkillable. Or you have to do a massive risky all-in just to kill it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Skill planes here. Yeah. And the attack rocket loiters. We've got skill planes from both parties. Yeah. My goodness. Oh, what are these uh, mortar pits doing? What are they? Why are they so far forward? Yeah, I don't know. I think we're trying to focus the AT gun, but <laughs> a bit of an AFK there from yeah, Ruby. Yeah, a little bit. Meanwhile, Flat Feeling is getting pushed by the very slow Matilda. Panzer three versus Howard. So there, the mods are going in. I tell you what, is, is he trying to? Oh, it's a off? big all in, yeah. Big all in, yeah. Is he succeeding the there? Oh yes, look at this. I, the verbal vins. Surprise, yeah. verbal vins round the back. We do have an M1 AT gun facing them from Ray. One's going to go down, but the amount of pressure they're applying is tremendous. AT gun goes down, okay. However, there's another AT gun firing on the side. What? Oh, but the incendiary. Dude, the incendiary for the mods are so clutch. Yeah. The team game synergy from these two has been yeah, fantastic. In this 2v2 final. You know what happens if they win this, though, Demare? You know what happens on the brackets? They have to play each other, right? They have to play each other, that's right! So if these two bros win, and they do look like they're about to, we've got the Matilda getting taken down by a clutch Panzer III. Tomorrow, Saturday, they will have to turn on each other. Oh my god. Definitely help themselves earn some good money here. I think they're up into the hundreds and hundreds of dollars now. I'll have to go check the brackets to remind myself exactly where they've gotten up to. I think it's at least 150 for the um, for where they're at, or something like that. Maybe 300. I'll have to check. But it oh, Ruby like does have he does have the second HP upgrade on his Panzers on his tanks. I just need to see. Does he have any other upgrades? Yeah, he has tungsten as well. Oh my god. Yeah, that's good, right? It's yeah, Tungsten with the armor-piercing veteran gunners, I think. I don't know how much pen that is against Matilda's, but it must be pretty high. Yeah, it seems like it's working. Pathfinder's just taken out by Verbalvin, by the way. Yeah. Ray's got double bulldozers, three rifles, one captain, two engineers. That's a small army for this stage of the game. 59 pop cap. Meanwhile, his teammate Havoc has a better pop cap, and he's fighting back with his Matilda's 71. Too badly. I feel the allies know they have to push back now, Demare. They're gonna go yeah, for it. Have to. These two martyrs, though, are completely zoning out Ray. Yep, yeah, well, we're just me very... the grant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. By the way, we're very close to 180 munitions for Ray to get the carpet bombing run. Maybe they know they need to push and they're going for it now. 
Yeah, no, they're good there now. That, that's, that grant is... Oof. There's also a pack gun getting shots in on the middle VP. This is a mess. Yeah, tank goes down for the Brit player. Yeah. Here comes that carpet bombing. Is it too late? Oh. oh, he's not moving fast enough. That's a lot of stuff he's about to lose. Say goodbye to it. Warrior's gonna go down, yeah. Oh. He did all right, he lost two team weapons. It was the mortar and... Okay. I think it was the flak, yeah. Yeah. Could have been worse. Right, so can the Allies cap the victory points now? They're going north, they're going center. What do we have to answer it? We've got this verbal vind. What's this? We've got the All skill planes again. Yeah, yep. Stuka coming in. Oh, wow. Pinning infantry as well. They kept the central victory point, Demer. They kept it. They did oh lose a panzer, God. but they kept the victory point. There's the skill. Take out the Matilda. Yeah, the Panzer three missed the killing shot on the Grant, but the Grant oh, went thanks. down. These double martyrs, man. They don't have any kills, but they have been doing a lot of damage. Do I need to go to the optician, uh, Demar? I really can't tell the difference between Grants and Matildas this patch. Like, I think my eyes are disintegrating. Is it, it could the skin? Be, could do be. they look similar to you, or do I need to get my glasses tested? I just, I, I mean, it's from the audio. I can oh, easily okay. distinguish them. I need to, yeah, echolocate. Yeah. Fair enough. Anyway, we've got Ruby pushing in. We've got the Panzergrenadiers Panzer keeping that central victory oh, point man. under Axis lockdown. 28 remain for the Allies, or oh, they're out of this tournament. We've got a howitzer going down to modify it in the north. That's great play by Hulk Smash. He comes up yep. against the Hellcat, but he may defeat the Hellcat yet. Oh, that's, this is the... Anti-tank loiter from Havoc. Yep. Oh, the mod is both taken out. Central Damn. victory Holy point. Commandos are fighting there. It's frantic. It's fierce. It's furious. Can they survive? Oh, finally, something took a plane out before it could fire there. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Is that the Abiche? Something Yeah, it looks like. Oh, yeah, he does have an Abiche. Look at that. Abiche is firing. Dang. Yo, Abiche, okay. here we go. Yeah, right now the DAC army, though, this, this horde of P3s is yeah. just going to keep growing. Oh, they could get the bulldozer in here. The Hellcats are going to have to be first in its, their sights, though. Those survival packages paying dividends. They're going to hit an 18 aid. They could oh, get there we that. Go. They could get it. Oh, and they've just hit it. It's the Panzer Storm to Mare. Superior uh, speed, superior no. oh. firepower. Man, huh? There we go. There we go. And the victory points continue to tick down as soon as this Cat and Pride caps the Northern VP. And uh, Crusader. Crusader just turning into the wrong neighborhood. Oh, oh my god. Oh no. You're in a bad part of town, son. Poor thing didn't even last. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a crusade. Oh man. Oh, GG's Havoc says, that's right, it's a 2-0 victory for your dream team. <laughs> Ruby and Hulk Taylor. Smash. GG, well played, friends. GG. Oh, man. It wasn't finished, but we're not done. Well, now there's a war to be won. We never died, not even once. Welcome to the resurgence. Yeah, that crusader was funny at the end of there, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm, you know. That tank is in such an awkward spot in the current meta. Yeah, Just, either, you know. either go early and you spam it, or you don't go it. It's simple. I don't, I don't even know. I just feel like it's a panic. 
it's a panic vehicle. <laughs> I mean, in, in that case, I mean, yeah, I guess I kind of answered myself there. You can't, you can't technically oh. spam it though, right? You could just about get that. It's away. not that good. It's just too fragile. All right, we're looking at Ray versus Hulk Smash. Uh, yeah, he got smashed, didn't he? He never overtook. Um, he never ever overtook Hulk Smash on points captured. Meanwhile, Havoc versus Ruby. That was a lot more even yet again. I just feel like Hulk Smash has really shown himself to be one of the best 2v2 players in the community right now. I, I, I know Ruby played really well as well. Not taking any away from Ruby, but the most impressive player, I would say, is Hulk Smash. And the way I can prove that after I've shown the uh, damage dealt is if we watch the replay... Uh, thus also creating some YouTube buffer zone for the spoiler screen. Um, if we just watch from Hulk Smash's perspective. So let's uh, go from his mode only. This is free camera off. Hulk Smash. Yeah, let's do it. So this is from Hulk Smash's perspective, how he played... Have I loaded game one back since? Oh yeah, well, this is what uh, we want to do. Yeah, this is right, isn't it? Yeah, the, Yeah, this is game two. This is game two. So this is the game we just watched. Good, that's what I want to see. I want to see how yeah. Hulk Smash played as Wehrmacht. Um, get an idea for it. He's looking into the fog of war. He's clearly a cheater. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but um, let's just see how he does things and see how many times he synergizes with his teammate, Ruby. Because I've got a feeling it'll be pretty decent. Free room camera, we want that off. It's just, yep, yeah, there we go. He's starting to just uh, move around the game. How have you found, um, how did you find the map, Demer? Did you like Alst in this uh, series? I like the map. My only critique about it, I would say the plus 10 ammo between the barn and the, 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 the factory on the bottom, like near the middle, I feel like that's a little too, uh, it's a little too tight. Um, it, but below the middle VP, the the big barn and the the factory building, I just don't like that specific area. But I think everything else is pretty solid, though. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just felt like a, it feels solid. There's a lot of munitions in a row. Maybe the resources could be tweaked slightly. But it seems to play well. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it plays like the Co2 one. I have to say. How how about chat? How are you guys liking the um, the new version? I'll put you on the screen. Please be nice. Starting construction on our infantry company. How are you liking the new version of El Stauskas? Analytical cast now, guys. Sorry, my mic wasn't very close to my face, and I'm talking more quietly now. My bad. Yeah, I would say the big difference in this game was really just just look where the Panzergrenadiers from DAC are at. They're there to like immediately assist. The, oh. the, the let's go off the Hulk middle smash then let's uh, just go on both players in general and yeah let's just look for synergies how they played and how it was different yeah so as you rightfully say ruby's panzer yeah. grenadiers are in the center if you actually look at what ruby's done right he's got his weaker combat unit near a garrison so no matter what comes up to that panzer pile if he gets in that house he'll win he'll win the fight Meanwhile, the two Panzergrenadiers, which are obviously his better fighting units, they're out in the open. Yeah. Always together. Yeah. And I think that's just a great shout as well. The Panzer Pioneer's in the, the yeah. shed. No, it's, yeah, it's perfect. It's a perfect. Treehouse. It's a great position for yeah. them. You offset your weaker unit for a better position. So it's like, yeah. We pointed this out during the cast. The counterplay play against the Dingo was good. They kind of like basically get Yeah, I think the it. problem here is that I think I think this is kind of the mistake here. The dingo being so far out of position just allowed this 250 and these two Panzergrenadiers to just waffle stomp yeah. uh, two engagements back to back. Yeah. It was a good attack, but so this is sorry, this is the synergy. My bad, I was giving it all the credit to Hulk Smash. Ruby yeah, this is it comes right here. in yeah. with the 250, and this is kind of the plays kind of start to win in the game. Yeah. And this shouldn't be happening. Like, I've, I've played enough team games recently to know, like, this this only happens if, you know, the Dingo uh, does, like, a U-turn or yeah. is 
overextends chasing a bike or a cat in, so... I'm gonna pause it here now, because yep. our question has to be, what was Havoc doing? If he just... If his teammate is being double teamed, Havoc has to exploit that space, surely. Yeah, well, he's actually flanking. I'm actually paused at 33 seconds, but he kind of gives up capturing the plus 10 ammo, and I'm rec right. and I reckon the sapper near the so VP. So that three will... minutes 30. <laughs> yeah, 33. Yeah. Okay. I'll, right. I'll, I'm up 32, 33, 34. Yeah. So let's have a look yeah. what Havoc does and how well he does it. Or did Hulk Smash cut him off with the MG? Yeah, ah. I hope, yeah, I would say it's the MG. Great. Because they, he, Havoc, yeah, Havoc did everything right here. Like you know, he's coming in, control the middle. Uh, big mistake here was just overstaying yeah. with the sapper and the mine. That's a pretty big loss. Oh, yeah, the mine as well. So within the first three or four minutes now, just about, it really feels like they've absolutely done some possibly game-winning moves there. They double-teamed one player, they pivoted, defended the flank, then got a wipe. They basically went through the hardest phase of the 2v2 experience for Axis. The, the, the hardest part is literally the first five minutes. They've secured a wipe, they zoned out the dingo, uh, they you know, basically forced off the US player and the Brit player. Now they just camp, tech up, and they're pretty much good to go. And now if you compare that to the previous game that we casted, there was a mortar pit going up at this exact moment in the first game. Yep. And here it comes up, you know, five minutes later. Yeah. That's the big takeaway. Yeah, I, and it's all downhill from here for the allies. And I just like to think that we've just, I mean, it kind of shows itself. The synergy, the pushing, the pivot defense from Hulk Smash to turn his MG at exactly the right moment. He does, oh, this is a grenade wipe, by the way. I missed that the first time. Nice work. So it wasn't like Ray was playing bad. He got a great grenade wipe off there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the coastal wiped up top. I forgot about that. It's amazing how much you miss when you're trying to hype cast everything. Flying around the map like a yeah. hyped up little monkey. But 2v2 is bloody difficult to cast. It's like uh, there's a lot you yeah, end up missing. There's a lot. Yeah, especially especially if both sides are committing to like two separate 1v1s. The first game I thought was a lot harder to, yeah. to narrate. But this was a lot easier because most of it was near middle. It certainly was. Right then, there we go. That's what we wanted to show you guys. That was how we feel that the Axis player just the Axis players in game two played so much better together. They pushed together, they defended at the right times, and they attacked at the right times. And we've just shown in the first five minutes how they set the tone and got an, a pretty devastating 2-0 victory overall there um let's get the brackets up now and go and update them to show you what's going to happen uh next uh tomorrow it's uh, the next saturday is tomorrow so let's update the brackets in real time shall we yeah. and let's get it sorted so it's two nil there you go to hulk smash and ruby and quite sadly that's right they've now got to face each other oh, oh, oh my gosh <laughs> they beat uh, Jezulin and Elpern 2-1 they smashed Dexen and Prabati they smashed Ray and Havoc they've come through all this pain and suffering Demare and now they've got to fight yeah, each other yeah now they've got to kill each other <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh it's harsh isn't it it really is harsh but it's uh, it's got to happen they can't resurge unless they kill Oh you know, I like that rule because it means if you're making like a super strong team you have to acknowledge the fact that if you succeed you know yeah you're going to have to go up against, you know... <laughs> well, the whole idea, I, I thought, was, like, if you're... When you're t choosing your teammate, you also have to consider don't choose too strong a player. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, <laughs> you might not want Orange Pest on your team. You might want him on the other team, right, to get him out, sabotage him. <laughs> but I'm going to be completely honest. I probably won't cast the upper bracket final tomorrow, and that's crazy. I've cast a lot of Ferragy Orange Pest recently. I'm, I'm going to target the Hulk Smash Ruby series. It's 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 got such a better narrative to it, don't you feel? Um, I mean, yeah, I do think Hulk Smash has a significant lead over Ruby. I feel like Hulk Smash has a I mean, let's higher put... understanding of the game's mechanics. Sure, but let's put a poll out to chat and let's see what chat thinks. Let's do a five-minute poll. Um, what what should we target tomorrow? Should we?
upper fin. I can't fit final in. I'll just put V then instead of versus. Upper final or the 2v2 winners fight. Okay, the guys, there's a very important poll. I want you to vote because I actually don't know what we should target. Should it be the creme de la creme, the two number one and number two seeds who probably end up in the grand final together anyway? But you don't want to miss, like, you don't want to miss it in case it's an epic series. Um, I always remember GCS 2, the best series that was like the hidden best series was actually Talisman Love Nest number one. Um, like, it was it was just so good. Talisman Love Nest number one series was great. And then they played another two best of threes that day. <laughs> Brutal. Um, just because I've only really got time to do three series in a day, you know, somebody else will probably be able to do the rest. I hope I didn't show anything too bad there. Uber Eats, Eon. I didn't dox myself. Good. It's just loads of stuff from Indeed I just strapped up on screen. Okay, that's not too bad. Didn't dox myself. Great. <laughs> <laughs> on Twitch, though, if you show anything, it's it's up on screen. You're screwed. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, you got to scramble. You got to scramble to delete but the VOD and the stream. Scrambling, it's, it's already happened. It's on the internet. If it's on the internet for a millisecond, it's on the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But fortunately, I didn't. I mean, yeah, it depends. It depends. You know, sometimes if you don't have your finger on the print screen, you can get away with some stuff. <laughs> I don't want to know what you've accidentally shown. <laughs> I don't. Want to know. <laughs> it's happened twice. Twice. Oh, I, I like, don't oh, want to know. I I have accidentally shown. And stream. I can't talk delete. about what I accidentally showed once, but yeah, it's not good. Oh, there are legends, by the way, and I can't go into detail because Relic has sponsored this tournament, but there are legends that a, a co one uh, Twitch streamer back in the day, I'm talking 10 years ago, left the stream running and then had some private, special, personal time. <laughs> oh, yikes. You don't come back from that. You don't come back from that, Demare. That ne you, you never come back from that. <laughs> I mean, I, the worst I saw, Orange Pest was there. We were there. It was a co-1 streamer who was absolutely wasted. Yeah. And he was urinating in the corner of his room. <laughs> we, we, won't, we won't mention the name, but Orange Pest and I, we saw that. We can, saw that. I, I, can, I want to mute this because I can't tell Twitch chat this. Hang on, Demet. You, you, you're live, yeah. but I'm not. I'm just muting my mic. Yeah, so... Oh, no. <laughs> I'm live again. Yeah, oh, okay. that was absolutely the most obvious I, thing. I, I actually, yeah, you can imagine uh, it, okay. right? Okay. <laughs> um, no, I, I can actually. I can. All right. So, so yeah. Um. So we built up a lot of fluff time now for YouTube. I'm probably gonna end it there. We're at what, only one minute seventeen. No one's gonna think that's an epic two v two, are they? They're not. But uh, thanks for joining us today, everybody. It's been lovely. Oh, we still got the poll. We still got the poll. Oh, it's close, by the way. It's really close. I'm going to have to show that. That is a poll that is very close. So if you want to see the 2v2 winners fight prioritized, or you want to see the Farage Orange, sorry, that's I love orange, it, yeah. it's Orange, upper final prioritized, go vote. Go Voter vote. turnout. Voter turnout. It's It's great to see. Well, I'm stacking the ballot 17 right and now. 9. <laughs> stacking the ballot. There's postal votes coming in from your dead grandma. It's all happening. Uh, it, it can be. Somebody will cover it. I just... I've got... I'm going to do three series in a row tomorrow, Havoc, I believe. So... Uh, oh, God. I'm going to do three series in a row. That's enough for any man. Isn't it? I think I'm doing three tomorrow. Let me just check, actually. Am I just chatting absolute crap? Hang on. Wait. Oh no, that's why I did this today. I'm casting all three tomorrow. My bad, I forgot. <laughs> what a terrible okay. poll. <laughs> but look, this is the one we'll do first then. Or the one that'll take center stage. Okay. You'll get fresh AE for the one you voted for. Right, okay. So what we'll do is Hulk Smash Ruby play in secret. Farage Orange Pest, I'll cast them as the replays come out. Then I'll cast Hulk Smash Ruby. And then we'll do lower bracket final. And I'm hoping to get Daniel D to do some casting tomorrow. I really liked casting with him. And maybe Havoc now Havoc's out. What do you think, Demare? That'd be nice. Give, throw Absolutely. Havoc a bone, eh? Must be feeling pretty sad. Uh, 
let's work out the prize pool, see where we're at. So we've got, we know first, second, third. So Hulk Smash and Ruby are guaranteed third and fourth prize money. Wow, $250 or $450. That 2v2 work they did pushed them from $0 to 250 guaranteed and 450 um, for the winner of their fight tomorrow. That's decent. What yeah, that's think? US as well, right? Yeah, 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 US dollars. Yeah, real dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Canadian, so you know. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like one. Point. My loonies. <laughs> so that's really decent. That's very good. And then you got Ferragi Orange Pest. Um, of course, one of them will be sec end up either being. Hang on. One, two, three. Oh, wait. Hang on. How does it work? You go one, two. Oh, no. Three and four are there. Five and six. Oh, it's not quite as good as I said. 125 or 250. One of them's guaranteed 125. The other will get either 250 or 450. Depend well, they may even win the whole thing, obviously. But yeah, okay. Fair enough. I understand better now. I'm just basically correcting myself a lot. Right then, guys, we've created enough YouTube buffer zone. Who wants to stream? I'll give them the big host. Demer, do you want to go stream again? Oh, no, I'm, I'm actually going back to work. I'm going to the gym. Daniel D is on, if you want to give him a shout-out. He's, I think he's doing replays. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's do that. We like a bit of double D. Let's get him on. All right, that's Daniel D. Oh, Re Havoc said you'll get on. Oh, never mind, never mind. Never oh, mind. Havoc wants in. Yep, let's get him. Because he asked, and Daniel D doesn't know. <laughs> so it's all good. Plus, Daniel D was uh, not watching our awesome casting, so we'll definitely go raid. The have Wrecker of Havoc. Right, thanks, dudes. Hope you have a really good uh, Friday evening, and catch us tomorrow from 2 p.m. GMT um, for, for three series of excellent Company of Heroes play. Thank you, and goodbye. Did I say goodbye? Excellent. You did, sir. You did. You, you've got to say goodbye. Oh, I have to say goodbye. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Finished. And this is for you guys on YouTube. Thank you for watching. I'm sure you subscribed. And if you made it this far, what is the secret code word, Demare? What do they have to say to prove they are true fans? A code Fabrizio. Word. What is Fabrizio. it? Fabrizio. 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 How, how do yeah, you yeah, spell yeah. that? Fabrizio. I don't know. Just listen. It's the guy in Titanic <laughs> that gets shot. Okay, it's the it's Fabrizio. the Italian guy that gets shot in Titanic. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Fabrizio. Thanks, guys. <laughs> bye bye.